Throughout the past two decades, the furry community has steadily gained popularity, with both good and bad attention, constant controversy, and the community showing up in people you would never guess. It's hard to deny the impact that furries have had on the online world, but today I wanted to talk about a more niche subsect of the community, one that is objectively predatory and genuinely filled with evil and disgusting people. Let me tell you about the transfer community and its popular game, Changed. So what exactly is transfer? Well, the TLDR of it all is a human who is transformed into a furry, but obviously it goes deeper than that. Transfer is generally known as a kink. Most people in the community claim it is a safe for work kink. Regardless of the validity of safe for work kinks even existing, I think it's extremely concerning how far the game and concept overall has reached, especially because the community of transfer has spread to countless games. Roblox, Minecraft, Gmod, VRChat, most if not arguably all of these games are filled with children. In the case of Roblox and VRChat, both games are free and can run on basically anything, meaning they can reach a wide audience with no real barrier to the gameplay you can experience or the players you'll be interacting with. Just as an example to show you how far transfer has spread, the character on screen now is named Puro, but I'm sure you've seen it under different names, in different games, forums, YouTube videos, or countless other internet spaces and forms of media. The characters and themes that are popular in the transfer community have transcended the said community and can be found in unrelated spaces. But what caused the blow up of this community and why do I think it's harmful? It all started in 2018 with the release of a game called Changed by Chinese indie dev Dragon Snow. And while I'm sure this phenomenon of transfer existed before this point, it's hard if not completely impossible to find reference of transfer before the release of the game. So while I'm sure it existed before 2018, I couldn't really find much. The game found an immediate boost in popularity with the first couple months after the release, but quickly died down. Until a year later, during the lockdown caused by a certain virus, it blew up again. Dragon Snow gained almost 50,000 followers on Twitter. There were more players than ever and the community was growing, resulting in over 12,000 purchases leading to over $50,000 in revenue caused by this game, and likely way more. This resulted in Dragon Snow starting work on multiple different projects with this massive boost in funding. It seems this indie developer had won the jackpot, but things obviously aren't as good as I'm making them out to seem. The game itself is questionable to say the least, and the fact that this developer himself claims that it's appropriate for children is extremely concerning. And in order to explain why, let's talk about the game specifically, going over the first bit of gameplay and its corresponding story. The game opens with you waking up from cryosleep in a sterile medical looking room. You don't really have any objectives at this point, but it's pretty obvious you're supposed to get out of this room somehow. Opening event, you release a living milk pudding, and if you let it touch you, it initiates a very awesome animation. After you successfully leave this room, you're greeted by yet another mind-boggling puzzle. Once completed, a furry spawns, and your only choice is to run to the far right of the hallway. Getting caught obviously results in another superb cutscene. Once you successfully escape the furry, the next room you're in features a cat. Again, getting caught here will result in a special cutscene. Escaping from this room, you show up in an office hallway type room. Polaroid photos sit on a table, and they show pictures of a dog being turned into a furry, while he grabs at his crotch and is drooling. Phenomenal storytelling we have here. The next room is a stealth challenge, if you can even call it that. Basically just move when the lights are off. This room, however, is special. It's full of latex furries. Yes, you heard me right. Latex. But it gets even better. The cutscene that plays at a game over screen in this section features a latex furry mounting you from behind. Truly some groundbreaking game design we have here. After this, there are some more puzzles and you eventually meet the most iconic furry of all time, Huro, who eventually absorbs you into him. I think it's a little unclear and obviously a bit strange. What I just described to you is roughly the first fourth of this game, and I'm sure you're wondering why I just told you half of that, or why I included the animations I did, or why I just spent one and a half minutes describing a furry game to you. Well, it's because the character you play as, named Colin, is 15. Yes, all of those animations, the one where you're being mounted by furries, or where you're being absorbed by pudding milk, or just overall being fetishized in this game, it's all happening to a 15 year old boy. And the cherry on the cake of degeneracy here, the game is 14 plus. Obviously some of the player base and people on the outside looking in kinda had an issue with this. A child being sexualized is pretty bad. I know, hot take, right? And it doesn't stop there. The creator of the game, Dragon Snow, has attempted to defend himself multiple times and I feel like it's important to analyze at least two of the most interesting cases I found of him doing so. The first case I want to show you guys takes place on a Steam discussion thread in late 2021. A thread was posted on Steam discussing the potential age of Colin, 
the main character. It is confirmed here that he is 15 to 17, but from what I can find, he's most likely 15. Regardless, he is a minor. This thread includes Dragon Snow defending Colin's age of 15, saying, why are you guys so interested in whether the main character is an adult or not? Does transfer change anything because of adults and minors? I'm saying this because I'm tired of the slander that Colin is a minor equals I'm a pedophile, or Colin is an adult equals he clearly looks like a minor, I'm a pedophile. He followed this up by saying, why do people like so much to find beautiful, innocent, and funny things in media and like to find dirty and lewd content out of them? So what are you trying to say? That once kids play my game, they'll become lewd? Do they really think of sex when they see these images? Keep in mind, he animated characters in this game playing with their chests, being absorbed by latex, and in some extreme cases, characters forcing themselves on top of you. He then types a large message in Chinese, which I had to Google Translate, so I apologize if there's any inaccuracies here. He claims that people in this thread are pushing Western morality and political correctness onto him. And while I agree the social and moral standards differ quite drastically between America and China, when you choose to sexualize an underdeveloped brain or body, no matter your culture, laws, or politics, I find that pretty reprehensible. But let's give Dragon Snow the benefit of the doubt here. He doesn't think sexualizing children is normal or okay, right? Well, unfortunately, you would still be wrong. He posts on Twitter saying, I don't think there's anything weird with liking a video of Puro celebrating children's birthdays. Secondly, in my country, the term Jing Shai is very common, and no one would be considered pedophilic because they say it. He then posts an image of the main character, Colin, covered in Puro milk or latex or something, saying it isn't NSFW. That term earlier, by the way, Jing Chai, has a direct translation to English. I don't know if I can say the word on YouTube, but it basically translates to a NSFW drawing of an underage boy, which that picture that he posted in this Twitter thread is just that. Yes, you heard me right. He claims that NSFW of drawn children isn't pedophilic, and he proceeds to post said content onto his timeline. Not to mention his Twitter likes and reposts often have his characters, usually Colin, the 15-year-old, being sexualized. In some cases, full-on NSFW being drawn or reposted or liked by Dragon Snow. And when you add his Discord server into the mix, it's more than alarming to learn that Dragon Snow hosts a community server full of minors while thinking it's okay to sexualize them. So just to wrap this little bundle of degeneracy up with some fancy wrapping paper and a little bow, let's summarize what we just learned. Dragon Snow thinks it's perfectly fine to sexualize children, host a community Discord server full of them, and insists his fetish game is appropriate for children 14 and up to play. Truly an amazing character we have here. But this does all beg the question, why are so many children being exposed to this content and this community? That would be in large part to sandbox social games with volatile or outright terrible moderation. I'm going to point out VRChat and Roblox specifically, going over why I think both, respectively, are being used to spread this content around to children. So with that out of the way, let's talk about the frankly massive transfer community on Roblox. There isn't really a specific game I want to talk about here. In general, the Roblox side of things has dozens of games, averaging from 10 players to hundreds playing at once. My main concern here is just how far and how fast the community is spreading on Roblox. It's been established now that transfer is a fetish, at least to some extent, and making content around that concept and pushing it to children can obviously have some terrible outcome. A simple Google search of transfer already shows some pretty rough images. Combine that with the concept of safer work kinks that I spoke about earlier, I don't even think I have to explain why this is extremely dangerous. If a child, or quite frankly anyone, just happens to stumble upon one of these games and try googling about them or try to search out the community, it's going to end in NSFW to some extent. Roblox, as far as I can tell, has the biggest transfer player base outside of the original game. I think it's genuinely disgusting how easy it is for children to find this content and community. Not really much more I can say here. I personally think the Roblox transfer community and how it's spreading is just one massive ticking time bomb. While at a first glance, none of the games you can see with just a search on the Roblox menu are NSFW, that doesn't change the fact that the community and the concept itself is. I genuinely believe without any doubt that the speed in which transfer is spreading on Roblox, the lack of moderation, and how the developer presents himself online, something bad is definitely going to happen here, and it's only a matter of time. The VR chat side of things is extremely similar. I think the avatars and the furry jiggle physics put it on a slightly higher level of degeneracy though. Again, it's a free game, insanely accessible, and has terrible moderation. If you've watched any of the videos on my channel, you know exactly how I feel about NSFW communities or spaces on VR chat. They are inherently dangerous, especially when permabans aren't exactly a thing. People can just make new accounts and they have in the past. VRChat doesn't really enforce their avatar rules either. 
so you'll see people running around in NSFW avatars quite often. There are a few changed furry worlds on VRChat, usually only a handful of people inside them though. However, there are way more changed avatars here. Obviously, some of them have the jiggle physics I mentioned earlier. I would confidently say that the VRChat side of this community, while notably smaller than the Roblox one, is pretty rough to say the least. Especially when there is a DPS feature in some games, combine that with these avatars, the transfer in VRChat community's combined degeneracy, it's clearly a cause for concern. If I drink this above or below Roblox, it would definitely be a hard pick, but I think I could confidently put it slightly above. And just as a little treat for you all, I'll throw in some Minecraft and Gmod for free, as they're pretty similar in this instance. Both have a massive place on YouTube, relatively speaking. Both are obviously player-driven sandboxes. I would argue most of the Minecraft content here is being targeted towards children. I can't exactly make the argument that it's necessarily malicious in any way, as I can't really prove that, but I would definitely stand by the child demographic argument. There's way more Minecraft content on YouTube, some videos hitting over 100,000 views. Gmod notably has less content on the platform. That being said, it still exists. And I feel it's important to mention either way. I could go more in depth with this topic, but I'd rather not have this video start to drag, so let's just move on. Now, sure, I could have mentioned more of Dragon Snow's tweets trying to defend himself, the multiple YouTubers making content around this game, the multiple fetish discords with no moderation, but realistically, I think you all get the point. This is an insanely degenerate, predatory community of people who, intentionally or not, are supporting a game and a developer who actively sexualizes children. It's genuinely baffling how ignorant the transfer community is to this frankly massive and disgusting issue, and the few who are aware just don't seem to acknowledge this or care about it. I find genuine joy in the fact that I didn't have anyone other than the developer to talk about here. But on the other side of that same coin, I'm worried about the potential evil these people could push out, or the evil that potentially already exists and just hasn't surfaced yet. What is worrying though is the fact that some massive YouTubers have covered this game, notably Garo Shadowscale, who has a little over 100,000 subscribers. Garo himself participates in some odd practices, which Toastify covered in a video recently, but again, this just shows how easily and rapidly this community and its degeneracy can spread. There are a few videos about this topic that I'll link below, as I think this is genuinely something that needs to be covered more. I think people need to be told about this, especially people in the community who are unaware of the developers' opinions on children. I think NSFW communities, which present themselves openly to children or allow easy access to children, should be nuked, for lack of better phrasing here. I genuinely don't think there is a good middle ground for the transfer community, and I don't think there is much more to say. Transfer is a dangerous, predatory, terrifying mess of a community, and it stayed under the radar for half a decade at this point, being covered by big YouTubers in a positive light, ignoring the blatant disgusting issues, and to this day still has a growing and more or less thriving community. And I think that sums it up pretty well. Transfer is bad and gross and weird and disgusting, and that's all there really is to say. The Discord will be linked below if you want to participate in a slightly less degenerate community or get in contact with me for any reason. And with that out of the way, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.